All right, so we've got all of these crazy banners in 2.4. We've also got Yay, she's probably gonna come out in 2.5. So all of the people are talking about these things, but I feel like one character is kind of flying under the radar. This character is Yoon Jin. She's a very, very good support, and we're gonna see why in a little bit. And if you have a main DPS who does damage with his normal attacks, then Yoon Jin should probably be on your team. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to build her as a support and also maybe as a sub DPS. Without further ado, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and let's begin. Alright, so starting off with her talent priorities, for Yoon Jin, as I said before, her main role is going to be as a support or like team buffer. She's going to be buffing your main DPS, and she's going to be increasing his auto attacks damage. The talent that's going to do that is her elemental burst. So you should definitely prioritize upgrading your elemental burst first, and then your elemental skill. Her auto attacks, you're not going to need them at all, they're going to be pretty much useless. So how does her skill and burst? sword guys um her skill is just gonna be um pretty much beidou's elemental skill you're gonna have to counter it and time it perfectly and it's gonna do damage or you can just like tap it and it's gonna do a little bit of damage that's pretty much her skill it's pretty simple her elemental burst when you do it it's gonna do some initial damage and then it's gonna do um some damage increase to your current character well first auto attacks only so when you auto attacks after you do her burst your auto attacks are gonna have a damage increase all right so now i'm gonna explain guys how she does her damage bonus I know a lot of people might be confused about this and also I'm gonna tell you guys why is she so good. So let's take a DPS for example, let's say Razor. Razor is a DPS who does damage mainly with his auto attacks. So how does the damage work in Genshin Impact guys? When it's a crit hit for example, the damage works like this. So you take Razor's total attack and then you multiply it by the multiplier of the hit. Then you multiply that by the crit, how much crit damage you have. Then finally you multiply it by damage bonus. In this case Razor does physical damage so we're gonna multiply it by how much physical damage bonus we have all right so let's give an example let's say we have a razor that has 100% crit damage and let's say he has 50% physical damage bonus let's say he has any base attack and for any hit so for example we're gonna multiply his attack by the hits multiplier and we're gonna get for example 1.5k I didn't include any attack or multiplier just to make it pretty simple so we have 1.5k that's a simple number now we're gonna multiply that number with crit damage we have 100% crit damage so we're gonna have 1.5k multiplied by 2 100% crit damage means double of the damage and then we're gonna multiply it by the damage bonus we have 50% damage bonus that means we're gonna multiply it by 1.5 so we have 1.5k multiplied by 2 multiplied by 1.5 that means we're gonna have a 4.5k hit so that's how much razor is gonna hit without yunjin now let's say we have yunjin in our team so she does her burst and let's say yunjin has a 2k defense now let's say she has her burst at talent level 8 so the damage increase is going to be about 51 percent of the defense we're going to say 50 percent to make it simple so 50 percent out of her defense is going to be 1k she has 2k defense half of it is going to be 1k so how is that 1k going to work guys is that you've seen that 1.5 the first like um damage razor does the attack multiplied by the multiplier we're going to add 1k to that so we're going to have attack multiplied by the multiplier plus the damage bonus and then we're going to multiply them by Razor's own crit and damage bonus. So we're going to have 1.5k plus 1k, which means 2.5k. We're going to multiply that by 2 and then by 1.5. So we're going to have a total damage of 7.5k. Now you've seen the damage increase. It went from 4.5k to 7.5k. So yeah, that's how Yunjin's burst works. It's going to add quite a lot of damage. I know I gave her 2k defense, which might be um, a little bit hard to get, but I feel like it's not that hard it's pretty achievable and even if you don't have 2k defense she's still gonna give you a lot of damage bonus so yeah that's why she's pretty good and also as you guys noticed as i said before she scales with um like razor's own crit and damage bonus so you really don't need to build crit on her the only way you're gonna benefit from crit on yunjin is on the initial hit on the burst and also the skill damage which in my opinion are not really that important that's why i don't really recommend building her as like a sub dps also and building crit on her because the only place she's gonna benefit from crit is gonna be her burst and skill that's it and i feel like if you focus on stacking defense on her she's gonna be providing more damage overall to the team than if you like build crit on her so yeah that's why i don't recommend building crit on yunji all right so now moving on to constellations i'm gonna tell you which ones i think are good and which ones i don't really think are worth it all right so starting off with her c1 it's gonna decrease the cooldown of your elemental skill it's gonna bring it down from nine seconds to i think around seven 
1.5 seconds. I don't really think it's worth it if you're going for C1 alone. I mean, if you're planning to do damage with her and use her as a sub DPS, then I guess maybe, but as I said before, this is not recommended. So yeah, I wouldn't say her C1 is worth it. Her C2 is after you do your elemental burst, all of the party members are gonna gain a 15% normal attack damage increase for 12 seconds. That's gonna boost your normal attacks even more. So yeah, I would say her C2 is pretty good. C2 is definitely worth it in my opinion. C3 is gonna increase the level of her elemental burst. I would say that's very good too. It's gonna increase how much defense you convert into damage bonus. So yeah, I would say C3 is definitely worth it too. C4 is after you trigger a crystallizer reaction, her defense is gonna be increased by 20%. I mean, it's cool, but a 20% defense increase is not really that significant, especially when you compare it to how much defense you're gonna be stacking on her. So yeah, I mean, again, it's pretty cool. You need defense on you and Jean, but C4 is where it starts to get kind of expensive. So I would say C4 is a cool constellation, but I wouldn't really say it's worth it. C5 is going to increase the level of your elemental skill. It's not really worth it. And finally, C6 is going to increase the attack speed of your normal attacks by 12%. Very good constellation. It's also going to give you a lot of extra DPS in general. I mean, C6 is pretty expensive, but yeah, I would say it's a good C6. So if you were planning to go for C6, I would say it's worth it. Definitely not necessary though, but yeah, it's good. If I had to choose which is her best constellation, I would say C2 or C3. If you're planning to invest in her a little bit, I would say go C2 or C3. They have great value and they're not really that expensive. So yeah, and she can also work at C0 perfectly fine, by the way. All right, so now moving on to her weapons. So Yunjin is going to be scaling with defense guys, but unfortunately until now we don't have a defense polar. So that's going to leave us with either energy recharge options to increase the um, uptime of your elemental burst. Or if you're planning to build her as a sub DPS too and do damage with her elemental skill and burst, then in that case you might go with crit options. So you have the engulfed lightning, you have the skyward spine, you have the prototype star glitter, the favonius lanes, and also the catch is pretty good. Three star weapons, I honestly, I don't really see any weapon that can work on her, but you have the free to play prototype star glitter. So hopefully you don't need the three star weapon. Now, as I said before, if you're planning to use her as a sub DPS too, you're going to have the crit weapons and you're going to have only the crit weapons, like the usual damage weapons are not really going to work pretty well on her because she only scales with defense on her damage. So all of the weapons that are going to give like attack and the high base attack are not really going to be good on her. So the only options you have are going to be the prime primordial jade you're gonna have the black cliff pole the deathmatch and finally the white tassel that's it for her damage weapons but as i said before guys i don't really recommend you focusing on her like elemental skill and elemental burst damage in my opinion just stack defense on her and focus on helping your main dps and you're gonna be good all right so now moving on her artifact sets now the best set that's gonna work on her is gonna be the husk of opal into dreams the four piece husk is gonna give her defense a lot of defense it synergizes pretty well with her and it's also also gonna give her some geo damage bonus so yeah it's pretty good for a support build or sub dps build it's gonna be the best set now it's definitely very recommended to go full four piece husk but if you don't have like a full four piece husk you can go like two piece husk then two piece emblem or maybe if you're focusing on her sub dps capabilities maybe two piece husk and two piece petra to increase your damage with your burst and skill another option that's gonna be actually pretty good on her is gonna be a four piece archaic petra it's not really recommended but it's also gonna work because since she's actually actually one of the few geo supports that are gonna work on like um pretty much any team not like only geo specific teams so she's gonna work on like different elements teams so if you're using like a main dps who's not physical in that case you can use the four piece petra it's not really gonna be giving you defense but it's gonna be increasing your like uh, elemental damage bonus so yeah four piece petra is gonna work on her too Alright, so now moving on to her artifact stats. Before I continue with this, guys, if you're enjoying the video, then please make sure to subscribe to the channel. That's gonna help me a lot. So if you're enjoying the video, please subscribe. Thank you. So now for her main stats, it's gonna be pretty simple. You just wanna stack defense on her. So you can go defense, 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 and that's my favorite. Or if you're planning to do damage with her skill and burst too, you can go defense, defense, then crit. I don't really recommend it, but it's gonna be viable. If you wanna build her as a sub DPS too, you can build crit on her. So you're gonna 
gonna need a crit circlet. Now for the substats, you'd want defense percent or flat defense. You'd want some energy recharge too. And if you're building her as a sub DPS, you'd want some crit rate and crit damage too. Now for the final stats you should have on you and Jean, only if you're building her as a sub DPS, you're gonna need some crit. So you're gonna need the usual around 50 to 70 percent crit rate and then uh, 100 to 140 percent crit damage. If you're not building her for her own damage, then forget about crit rate and crit damage completely. Now for energy recharge, her burst is not really that expensive. It's gonna cost 60 energy. But the thing is, you're usually not gonna play her on like a full Geo team. You're gonna play her in like a team with different elements, so she might have some energy problems. Or not really energy problems, but like um, she wouldn't be as easy to get her burst as you would think. So maybe you're gonna need around like 150 to 170 energy recharge to make sure you have her burst on a good uptime. She also scales with energy recharge, so that shouldn't be hard. Now for how much defense you should have on her, I wouldn't say a specific number, just get as much as you can, stack as much defense as you can, and that's it. The more, the better. Alright, so now we're finally moving to her team comps. So we're gonna need two things for Yunjin's team comps. We're gonna need a main DPS who does damage with his normal attacks, and you're gonna need a team with at least three or four different elements. These are the only things you're gonna need. Um, generally, you're gonna build a team around your main DPS, not around like Yunjin. So yeah, there's like a lot of team examples you can have. A team example is gonna be like Razor, then Kea to help Razor with Superconduct, and then Bennett as a buffer for Razor, and then we're gonna add Yunjin. So we build Built a team around Razor himself, and then we added Yunjin. Another team is gonna be, say, Kokomi, and then Kazuha, and then let's say Bennett too, and then Yunjin. Also, guys, it's not necessary to get like four different elements. Three are gonna be enough. Just make sure you get three to like take advantage out of her passive, and that's it. It's not like super necessary to get four. So, for example, let's say Yoimiya, and then Shang Ling, and then Sucrose, and then Yunjin. That's gonna be a viable team too. All right. So now, if you got any other questions, leave them in the comments. That was my Jim build. If you liked the video, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and yeah, see y'all in the next video. Peace.